back surgery he had a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. something like that. And from so they had to go in and repair that leakage. And uh, yeah, now he's going to be in ICU for a few days just to monitor the. They put in a lumbar bar. Right. Yeah. Some of the drain was fluid, and uh, he was going to spend a few days in ICU. And then they, I think he'd be glad to be back. issues related to his back surgery a few weeks ago. So we want to continue to remember Gary and, and his recovery, Jay and them. Uh, are there any other uh, prayer requests this morning? Yes, sir. That body will not live. <laughs> 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 Sunday school literature again, the winter quarter is out here on the table if you want a, a winter quarter book. If you want it for the spring, you need to sign it up. Either on one of the sign-up sheets or city board. So uh, winter quarter's on the table, along with mature living and the uh, open windows. Today is the last day of the quarter. Everybody wants the spring quarter. I had to Quarter is good to it, but uh, I'm going to miss somebody, so I'm still silent. So 
depends on the equation. If the winter board is on the table, if you are interested in the spring literature, we would do August and later, and then we signed up to get that. All right, well, I'm good. So Roman this morning is going to light two of the purple candles. Uh, one is the called the prophecy candle, and then the other is the Bethlehem candle. The one prophecy and Bethlehem. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne, and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forward. Forever the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And then I want to read from Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 5. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare for the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see from the mouth of the Lord, for the mouth of the Lord is Sunday here in December. Uh, again, I'm, this is my favorite time of year. Uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> you can sing it, and it is. It, it truly is uh, a great time. Um, we have been in Hebrews on Sunday. Uh, also, I want you to know that we've been in John in, uh, on Wednesdays, and uh, we've been going through John, and we've been talking about Jesus Christ as being the true vine, and we as believers are the branches that produce fruit, and with that, we can ask God for anything, uh, just because we are on the same will as God, we come to Him and we say that whatever you want, Father, is what I want, and then He says that He will answer all of our prayers. What is it that He wants from us? He wants us to go out into the world proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, teaching them everything that we have been taught, that from disciple to disciple to disciple to disciple, all from generation to generation, from what you've heard from my mouth is what has been preached from the very beginning when Christ came and, and taught his disciples. It has been passed down from generation to generation to to you. And so and that's a great thing. But that's what he wants from us. He wants us to go and baptize. And all the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he tells us that he is with us. From age to age. From generation to generation. From the very to the very end. He is with us. And that is a great thing. That is a great hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about something different as far as, you know, when I said something about the vine and, and abiding, a branch abiding into the vine, and staying with that word uh, meno in the, in the Greek means to remain, to remain with. Okay, so, but what I want us to talk about and kind of turn our attention to another way to look at it. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about God as our shepherd. Not just a, a shepherd. He's our great and good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. What does that mean? If God is our shepherd, what are we? Sheep. We're the sheep. We're the sheep. And sheep are amazing creatures. 
Boy, they are the smartest creatures in the world. They're super clean. They know what they're doing. <laughs> they're unafraid. Am I, am I speaking a different language here? Now, sheep are pretty dumb. I mean, if you've been around sheep, you realize that they are dirty creatures. They are dirty. They need to be clean. They wander off all the time. I mean, they constantly wander off. And they're having to be called back. They, they can't even take care of themselves. They, 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 you think about it, from the beginning of time, there had to have been a shepherd for the sheep. From the beginning of time, when somebody talks about, you know, uh, evolution, when somebody talks about creation of God, I'm like, just look at the sheep. How did they survive? You know, think about it. How did, how, did the, how did the sheep survive without somebody being there to protect them? You know, there was always a shepherd there for them. Because if, if, if there wasn't, that, that, they would be gone. They would be eliminated. Because they have no defense. They get eaten really easily. They, they, you know, they, get, they allow the enemy to kind of just come into the, the flock. And the enemy just picks them off one by one, whether it be a bear, a lion, a wolf, you name it. But I want us to look at that. I want us to examine that. And, and, you know, I want you to see it in a different way. We see it, again, as, as Christ being the true vine and, and we as the believers being plugged into it. And we have faith in Christ. And we have obedience to Christ. And, and there are works that come from our obedience to Christ. And, and then we have reward. And that reward is the joy of God. To, to be in the fellowship with God. Okay? So that's what we see with the, with the, with the vine. With the true vine. And us being the branches. But I want, it, I want us to see it in the way of walking with him. And in doing so, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 5, it says, By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Now you think to yourself, who is this Enoch? Who is Enoch? How many people have ever heard of Enoch? Okay, we have quite a bit here, and there are some who haven't. So let's just go back to Genesis chapter 5, and we'll study a little bit about who Enoch was, because I want you to understand who he was, and why he is in the hall of faith, so to speak. Okay, so we go back to chapter 5 of Genesis, and now we're talking about the generations of Adam. It says, this is the book of the generation of Adam. In that day when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female, and he blessed them and named them man. In the day when they were created, when Adam had lived 130 years, he became a father of a son in his own likeness, according to his image, and named him Seth. In the days of Adam, after he became the father of Seth, were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Now, can you imagine that? 930 years. You know, and I, I, I look at myself, and I think, wow, I've only got about four, 40 years left, maybe, you know? Uh, maybe 20. The you know, average man lives about 70 years, 75 years. I've got about 20 years left in my life. But, you know, 
Adam has his child of 130 years and says, whoa, this is, I'm not even young. I'm young. I'm a spring chicken. <laughs> so 130 years is a spring chicken. So let me ask you, those who are above 70, uh, do you feel like a spring chicken? Do you feel like a spring chicken? Do, do you think 130 years you would still be having children? No, I, it's just something to it. I, when I read things like this, it just blows my mind. But to think that Adam died not too long before the flood. I mean, think about that. He lived a, a long life. And so what you see here is that Adam lived, uh, he lived uh, 930 years and he died. In verse 6, Seth lived 105 years and became the father of Enosh. Then Seth lived 807 years after he became the father of Enosh. And he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years and he, lived, and he died. Enosh lived nine, uh, 90 years and he became the father of Kenan. Then Enosh lived 815 years after he became the father of Kenan and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh uh, were 905 years and he died. Kenan lived 70 years and he became the father of uh, <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo. Imagine calling that name for dinner. Mahalo! <laughs> Time for dinner! So, uh, yeah, uh, so you got Mahalo, though. Lived 75 years and became the father of Jared. And Jared opened up a diamond store. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. So, the days of Kingdom were 910 years and he had Mahalo. And Mahalalel lived 65 years, and he became the father of Jared. Then Mahalalel lived 800 years, uh, 830 years after he became the father of Jared, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. Jared lived 162 years, and he became the father of Enoch. This is a seven-generation child. And he says, then Jared lived 800 years after he became the father of Enoch. And he had other sons and daughters, so all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Now, you, now I'm sure we've all heard Methuselah, right? <coughs> that is a saying that... Uh, that person is as old as Methuselah. Why did they say that? Because Methuselah was the oldest person to ever live. Okay? Uh, Methuselah lived 180 years after uh, he gave birth to Lamech. And Methuselah lived 782 years after he became the father of Lamech. I'm sorry. And he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. So that was the oldest man. He almost lived to be a thousand years old. A thousand years old. Crazy. I wonder what he looked like back in that day. A thousand years old. I was just curious. But let's jump back up here to Enoch. It says Enoch lived in verse 21, 65 years became the father of Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. Now you see a difference here, right? You see something different in, in, in the break here. Because we're talking about the, the, you know, the begats, basically. And so-and-so begat so-and-so. And so-and-so begat so-and-so. And, 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 but what you see here is this break. This break is Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah. And he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And you say, did he die? No, Enoch walked with God. Remember, it says in 24, again, Enoch walked with God 
and he was not, for God took him. So now you know the history of Enoch. Very short history, right? I mean, he only lived 365 days. Years. Years. What? Years. years. I mean, yeah. Hello. Years. <laughs> I said days. I'm thinking a year. 365 days in a year. <laughs> Woo! 365 years. Okay? 365 years. He was a young, young buck. He died at a young age. <laughs> But he didn't die. It says here that he walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. So what you're seeing here is that Enoch, number one, walked with God. He walked with God. And the second thing you'll see here is that he was pleasing to God. So God took him, just took him right up to heaven. What does that actually mean? Why would God do that? Why would God change in all of this <coughs> that, that, and, and just take somebody up to heaven? Well, it says in Hebrews that he, he pleased God. I mean, what does that look like? Do we please God? Are we pleasing to God? Do, do we know of anybody else that he's, he's taken up to heaven other than Elijah? Ezekiel. Did he take Ezekiel? Ezekiel died. Oh, okay, but he brought him back. But here's the thing, <laughs> is that Elijah was taken up, Enoch was taken up. They didn't die. They didn't die. They were pleasing. The Enoch was pleasing to God. So I want us to think about that. I want us to think about what we're talking about when we, when we say that we walk with God. But I want it to be in the mindset of us being the sheep. And him being our great master. It all comes with obedience. You see, the reason why Enoch was taken up, and the reason why Enoch was pleasing to God is because he had faith. That's what the writer of Hebrews is pointing out. He says, Enoch had faith. By faith, Enoch. And because Enoch had faith, Enoch also walked in obedience with God. Remember, faith, obedience, works, reward. Faith, obedience, works, reward. The thing about the sheep with the shepherd. The shepherd calls out the sheep from the from the sheepfold. So it's a it's a, a an area, and we talked about this on a on a Wednesday night as well. And Christ said that he is the good shepherd, right? And he calls his sheep out of the sheepfold where they where they keep the sheep, all the sheep together. They all the shepherds, they bring the sheep into this fold and, and they 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 have it's a long area. It has only one way in, one way out, it's just one door. Jesus said that he was the door. So the, the shepherd calls out, he comes to the sheepfold, he calls out each of his sheep by name, is what Jesus said. Calls them out by name. And they come to him. And then it says that he leads them. He leads them. Ah, think about that. I mean, think about it. Your, your shepherd calling you for one. And you hear his voice. And you go to him. And then he begins to lead you. He begins to move you, 
right? And what are you doing? You are walking with him. You are walking with him. Now let's, let's, we go to a green pasture, right? And he, and he allows us to, to eat whatever in the green pasture, and he, and he gives us a brook to drink. Uh, but not a fast brook, not one that would scare us, but something that we could just, you know, get some water. And, and the whole time, he's, he's there with us. He's, we're walking with him. We're being obedient because we're walking with him. We have, the enemy is around us, but we're, we shouldn't fear the enemy. Don't fear the enemy. Why? Because our shepherd is with us. Here's the thing. All we like sheep, we go astray. We go astray, do we not? All of a sudden, we're, we're no longer doing the the commandments of the, we're not being obedient to God, and, and, and we go off and we start wandering off more and more, and we go further and further away and, and until we, we can't see the flock anymore, we can't see the shepherd anymore, and then all of a sudden we're in, we're in darkness. There's an enemy that's around us that's, that's waiting to pounce on us. Why? Why do we have this? Why are we in darkness? Why do we have this enemy that's getting ready to pounce us? Why am I afraid? Why do I not have food? Why do I not have something to drink? Because I wandered away. I'm not a bee. I think about our goofy dog. <laughs> I really do. I, this made me think about the, our, our dog, Raven. Lori and I will let the dog out. And, and we'll sit out there and talk for a little bit and, and uh, talk over our day and things like that. We let the dog out to use the bathroom and do whatever she wants to, running around. And then all of a sudden, we're like, where's, where's the dog? Where's the dog? I, I thought I heard her. There's a, her, her little uh, collar jingles. She's got little uh, uh, metals on there, so it, it makes it jingle. So we can hear her, you know, what I can hear and then all of a sudden I don't hear, and I'm like, where's that stupid dog? <laughs> and so we're, hey, sh sh hey, come here, Raven, Raven! Nothing. <laughs> now my kids understand, because they're out in the morning, and they can actually see her, you know, and she's just kind of like sniffing around and looking around, and, and they could be calling her, they could be calling her over and over and over again, and the dog's just kind of looking around like it's in another her own little world. And I get so aggravated with that dog. <laughs> Man, do I get angry with that dog. I'm like, where did she go? Why is she not coming when I call her? So what do I have to do? I usually walk out into the street, Walk over to this area over here, looking for her, trying to find her in some way, calling her name. And then I hear the jingle, and she starts to come. One night, one night, uh, she got across the street, and my wife and I are calling her, Raven, come. And she's just kind of looking at us, and we're like, Raven, come. And right about, a time, uh, right about that, that time, a car begins to, to drive down the road. And she decides she's going to come, but, and she's going to go right in front of this car. And the whole time, I'm like, Raven, come, Raven, come. And I see this car coming, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> and my wife screams, because the, the car comes to a screeching halt. And there's our goofy dog in front of the Almost got hit. Almost out. It, 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 and I, 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 I think about this. I think about this as I, as I read God's word. I think about the life that I'm living. And I say, you know, this is who we are. Mm. We are these sheep. We're these goofy dogs that walk around, <laughs> sniffing and looking around. And, and we don't realize that there's an enemy out there. We don't realize that we're in darkness and we need the shepherd.
effort to come. We need to be walking with the shepherd. Because when I'm walking with the shepherd, when I'm being obedient to the shepherd, I'm in his joy. I'm in his, his comfort. He's taking care of me. If I'm walking with him and being obedient to him and, and with him, I don't fear anything. I don't fear God. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Satan coming and, and destroying my life. I don't fear the darkness. I don't fear death. But if I live outside God's obedience, if I live outside, if I wander off, I am prey. We see that we, 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 um, we, we see in Proverbs. Turn to that. I want you to see this. Proverbs 15, 21. Proverbs 15, 21. Start out, wise men, foolish men, believers, non-believers, basically. But in, in 21 of, of, of chapter 15 of Proverbs, it says, Folly is joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding, a man of understanding <coughs> walks straight. See that? If you know who your shepherd is, if you understand your shepherd, if you obey your shepherd, you will walk straight. He will guide you. He will not let your foot slip. But the one who enjoys folly, they, they don't have any sense. Mm. They have no idea. They don't know anything about what the shepherd wants. They have no understanding of the commandments of God. None whatsoever. But if we walk with him, we have an understanding. We have obedience to him. We listen to his word. Come, go, eat, drink, be filled. The other thing I want us to look at is also who, who walks in his ways. Go to Deuteronomy 8, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, <laughs> chapter 8, and verse 6. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. It's Numbers, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. <laughs> yes, I'll get it right. <laughs> Chapter 8, I got that right, I hope. And, uh, yeah, 8, 6. Eight, six. He says, Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. There's your pasture. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing forth in valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of olive oil and honey. A land where you will eat food without scarcity in which you will not lack anything. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. Now this is a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a land that he's prepared for the people of Israel. But what does he say? 
Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in His ways and to fear Him. What happens when they stray off and start listening to other shepherds? What happens when they fall out of the commandments of God, of the obedience of God, of, of, of obeying God? What happens to them? They get plundered. They get destroyed. These are things we, we see because, because God has allowed us through, throughout history to see that if we fall out of the commandments of God, if we, if we disobey God, there is a punishment that comes with it. He's our great shepherd. He has great things for us. Great things for us. And all he has is that we trust him. That we trust him as our shepherd. That we trust that he has these great things. That he's going to lead us. That he's going to guide us. That he's going to take care of us. We obey him. So Enoch walked with God. Abraham. Abraham walked with God. Noah. said so Noah walked with God. Because he was obedient to God. He trusted God. I want you to see something. Real quick. Go to Psalm. One nineteen. This is the word of God. Now remember. What we are talking about here in Hebrews. I want you to. Let's, let's kind of go back and, and discuss what were we talking about from the very beginning. From the very beginning of Hebrews, it says that the Word of God, the Word of God was spoken. God spoke. And He spoke to the prophets and He used the prophets to speak to the people in and, and, and those last days. And, and in the last days, with, uh, in the old days, but in the last days, it's Jesus Christ that he's speaking. It's his words, it's his commandments. And so what you see here in Psalm 119, it's beautiful. I want you to take the time this week, probably tomorrow, when you crack open your Bible, I want you to go to Psalm 119, and I want you to read all of it. I want you to read all of Psalm 119. Because what Psalm 119, it relates to the law of God. It relates to His Word. And if you don't know what He's saying, if you don't know what His words are, then Hebrews 1 is not going to make any sense to you whatsoever. When He talks about the Word of God. Spoken. Okay? So, I want you to see this in verse 1. Psalm 119, verse 1. How blessed are those whose way is blameless. That's every believer. Remember Ephesians? Ephesians 1, that we are holy and blameless before him. It says here, how blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. Is this sounding familiar? I mean, we, this is what we've been teaching the past couple of weeks here. What does God want from all of us? Does He want our works? Does He want our best? No. He doesn't want our best. He doesn't want our works. He wants our hearts. So how blessed are those who observe His testimonies, who seek Him with all their heart. They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. You have obtained your, you have ordained your precepts that we should keep them diligently. Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes, that is your laws. Then I shall not be ashamed 
When I look upon all your commandments, I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. I want you to see this. It's all about walking with him, sheep. It's all about listening to him. What did Jesus Christ do? He listened to the Father. Everything that the Father has told him, he has told us. Everything that he has told, that the Father has told Jesus Christ to do, he has done. <laughs> He has followed all of the commandments of God, the Father. He says, I fulfill the law. I do the law. And I've done every single thing that he's asked me to do. And what did God the Father say to him? This is my beloved Son. In whom? I am well pleased. He's pleased with him. Why? Because he loves the Father enough to obey the Father. I, 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 I use my children as, as an example. When, when my children disobey, and everybody here knows and has had children, when your children disobey, you still love your children, but you get very angry with them, and they're not pleasing in your sight. Is that not true? When they when they disobey you, you, you get angry, but you still love them. See, it's the same with God. When, when we disobey Him, he, we, he, he still he gets angry with us. As a believer, he's, he's angry with us, yes, and He chastens us. But He still loves us. He still takes care of us. But He wants us to do His will. He wants us to do His commandments, to obey Him, to listen to Him, to trust Him and Him alone. And again, read Psalm 119 and you will see how important God's Word is to David. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. You'll see that it's broken up into sections. Aleph, Bey, Gimel. You see, that is the the uh, alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, and it's broken up into the Hebrew alphabet letters. Okay, so when you go through one nineteen, you'll start to understand more about God's word and how important it is. One of the last things I want to talk about, and I want you to, I, I, I don't want you to turn there, I want you to listen. After all that we've been talking about today, about being sheep, about following God's word, about obeying him and trusting him, I, I, I want you to, to listen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your 
rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to think about that verse. As a sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. And, and I'm not going to want for anything. He is going to supply everything I need. He's the one that leads me and makes me lay down by in these green pastures. He's the one that, that leads me beside these still waters to drink. He does all that. When we try to find water on our own, we, we leave the, the flock, we leave the master, and there's darkness. There is enemies that are ready to pounce on. But, but he, he restores your soul. And he guides you. He guides you in the path of righteousness. Think about that. You need to walk with him in order for you to be guided by him. He is our light. He is our light in a dark world. And if you aren't near Him, you are in darkness. If you are not obeying Him and being close to Him, you are in darkness. And He does this not for your name's sake, not for you, for his name's sake. He's the one that made all the promises. We break promises. He makes them. So he does these things for us. For his name's sake. Because he's promised to do so. So he does this for us. Because he loves us. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I want you to get that. There's a valley, and there's a shadow of death. It's not death itself. It's death to a believer is just a shadow. It's that Jesus Christ even said, you will not taste death. You will not see death as a believer. And you say, but Jerry, we, we all die. We, we all die, right? It's just a door we pass through as believers. As a non-believer, as a disobedient uh, a person, a, a one who doesn't keep his commandments, one who doesn't have anyone, anything to do, no trust in God whatsoever, when they die, they feel the sting of it immediately. And it's not just at that moment, it is an eternal sting. Eternal. But it says here that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's just a shadow. A shadow does nothing to you. It cannot affect you in any way. It has... No capability to reach out and do anything to you. But we walk in this shadow. Why? And we fear no evil. Why? Because he is walking with us. He's walking with us. So I fear no evil. 
I fear no death. I don't fear death. I don't fear evil. It says here that your rod and your staff they comfort me. Your rod is a picture of judgment. Your rod is a picture of, of commandment. This is what I want to, uh, if, we, if we break his law, we get out of, out of bounds, if we get, he, what he usually does, what a shepherd would usually do, is he would take that rod and he would break the leg of a sheep. To keep that sheep close to him. If it's his sheep, he's going to do whatever it takes to keep you close to him. If you are his sheep, he will do whatever it takes, even laying down his life for the sheep. To keep you close to him. It says that, that the, the father... No one comes to me. This is what Jesus said. No one comes to me unless the Father draws him. And, and when he draws him, I will in no wise cast him out. And do you know why he does this? He goes on to say that he, he does this, and, and he says that, that I lose none. So everyone that the Father has given Jesus Christ, the shepherd. Every sheep that the Father has given him, he will not lose one. So what does that mean? If one strays off, what does he do? He leaves the 99 righteous sheep, and he goes after the one sheep. Because that's his sheep. And what does he do? He brings that sheep in. Back to the fold. That sheep don't want to come back. That sheep don't want to stick around. He breaks its legs. And he heals it. He puts bandages around it. Oils and ointments around that, those legs. And, and, but the whole point is he takes that sheep up. He puts it on his neck. And he carries that sheep around. Everywhere that shepherd goes. That that broken sheep is on the neck of, of, of God. Our shepherd. And then when he heals, it, it, that, that sheep never leaves his side. Never leaves his side. That sheep sticks to him like glue. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing thing. But this is our shepherd. He'll leave the 99 righteous, and, and these 99 righteous, they are, the, the, the shepherd has gone off and, and found the one that ran away. It, it was absurd to the Pharisees and the, and the Jews at the time when he was telling this story, because they would say, you would never leave 99 sheep to the enemy. I mean, you would never, never leave this 99 sheep to go after one. Jesus says, no, if they're my sheep, I lose none. And then he says, and here's our hope, here's our hope, that I will raise them on the last day. Well, that's a great hope to have. To know that I have a shepherd that will never leave me, never forsake me. When I run off, he's going to go after me and grab me and pull me back into the fold. I may go through trial and tribulation, and that may happen, and that will happen to each one of us. He may chasten us for a little bit, but I'm going to stick closer to him like glue, and I'm going to obey him. But here's the thing. I, I need him for everything. So your rod... And then your staff. That staff, again, is something that was a very long staff. It had a hook on the end. And if a, if a sheep fell off, wandered off, and fell off the side of the cliff, and he was able to reach down and grab that sheep up with that staff and pull that, that, that sheep back up to the fold, he was able to, to, to keep the sheep 
from wandering off. We had that wandering sheep that would, well, again, that would wander off a little bit further, and he would just kind of use that staff to bring them in. But see, these are things of comfort. That's what we have to see. God's law is not something that is a, it, it, to a believer is something that pushes on you and pushes on you and says you have to live this way, you have to live this way. No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work that way. These are things that are comforting because I know my heart of the shepherd. I know his heart. He loves me. He wants to take care of me. He's done everything that he needs to do for me, including dying for me, laying down his life for me. I want to walk with him. I want to be next to him. I want his fellowship. It says here that he's prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He prepares a table for me. So I'm sitting here eating, enjoying everything that, in the presence of my enemies. He's there with me. I don't have to worry about the enemy. I don't have to worry about them coming in and destroying my life. But God has prepared this table for me, and he's laid it before me, and I can eat and sit and eat in green pastures, drink my water, while all the enemy is outside, and, and, and I'm protected by the shepherd. He's anointed my head with oil, We've talked about this. We, we've talked about this, the anointing. He's covered us. Judgment. Judgment doesn't come to those who believe because he has covered us. He has appeased the God, our God. He has uh, uh, covered us. He is our propitiation. He's anointed our heads with oil. And then here's the thing. My cup overflows. I have abundance. Even when I have nothing, I have everything. Surely, goodness, my Bible says loving kindness, but I think it's mercy. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. This is my shepherd following me as I go out. And, and he's watching me and taking care of me. He's always around. He's always going to be there with me. And his mercy and his goodness is always going to be there. It's always going to be with me. And here's the beauty. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I am not a servant. I am not a slave. I am one of who is a child of God. Christ said, we studied this last week in, in, on Wednesday. Christ said, I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. I call you friends. You, you're part of the household of God. Because everything that the Father has told me, I'm telling you. A slave doesn't get that. The slave doesn't know what his master's doing. But, but you do. Believer, you know what your master's doing. And, and you're, because you're of the household. You're of his household. If you live in the house, you need to know what the father's up to. And he lets you know. A slave, you just do what I tell you to do. Do what I tell you to do. But that's not who we are. We have been loved. We have been brought into the household of God. We are holy and blameless before him. We have been given the inheritance of God. Everything, Christ is everything that is mine is yours. It, I can't fathom that. But I hold on to it. I believe it. I trust it. Do you have faith where you trust your shepherd? Do you have obedience where you stay close to him, listen to his voice, listen to his word? Don't listen to all this out here. 
but listen to his word so you have obedience. Then you have works. Works. He's given us things to do. To go out and proclaim. To make more sheep. And then it says we have reward. Here's our reward. That goodness and mercy is going to be with me all the days of my life. And, and that I'm getting to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Th that's my reward. It's not so much of, 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 of tangible things, but it is the joy of God. I'm reconciled to God the Father. I'm reconciled to Him. I, I experience His joy that He has with the Son. He, he has that joy with me. And He sees me as pleasing. And He doesn't leave me here. He takes me. We'll be taken. We're all going to be taken, believer. We're all going to be taken up into his household. I, I want you to have hope. I want you to understand that. And with that faith, the, the faith of things, it, it, it's the proof of things that we can't see. But we see it. I, I see it. I see things to come. I see what's going on in this world. I see good and evil. I see it all. Why? Because of my faith. I hold on to that. I trust Him. I trust my shepherd. So Enoch, by faith, Enoch was taken up by God. He was pleasing to God. Why? Because he walked with Him. As a sheep should walk with his shepherd. He walked with Him. He loved him. He loved the shepherd. And Enoch was taken up because it pleased God that much. That's an amazing thing. I want that. I hope you do. I want to be pleasing to God. I want to be obedient to God. Oh, I want to have works. I want to have reward, but you know where it starts? Faith. And trust him. Let's turn to Hebrews one last time. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Did you get that? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is God. You must trust him. That he's in control of everything. And not only that, it says that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. That's who our God is. I, I, I want you to, to see this in such a, a, a realness. This is our shepherd. Trust him. Have faith in him. Love him and know that he has something great for you. You hope. I hope. I rest in him. I trust in him. You can have that as well. And if you hear his voice, don't run away. If you hear him calling you, saying, believe, trust in me, trust in me, I am the one I am the only way to the Father, the way, the truth, and the life. If you hear that today, come to Him. Don't hesitate. Because it's a dark world out there. It's evil. And it's crushing. <coughs> Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, that you are your order. I thank
thank you, Father, that you reward us not with it doesn't matter what you give us as far as the, the tangible stuff. We want your presence. We want to see you. The joy of being with you. The joy of seeing you face to face, Father. I pray that we think about death differently. I pray that we, we don't look at death as something uh, horrible, but a doorway to see you face to face. Because when we think about death this way, then we have no fear of anything. You told us, Lord, not to fear those who can hurt the body, but to fear you who can damage the soul. I, I fear you, Lord. I, I want to be near you. I want to be comforted by you. And I pray that that others will, will want that as well here in this church and, and in this community and in this world. They want to be comforted. They want to be loved. They want to be taken care of, Father. It starts with faith in you, knowing that you are who you say you are. The great I am. And also, Father, that, that you are the rewarder of those who seek after you. So, Father, I pray that those who are, that you've opened up their eyes and their ears and they begin to seek after you, that you save them, that you bring them into the fold. And, Lord, I trust you that you will not lose one, not one sheep, that you will lay down life, which you did, to bring all the sheep into the sheep. And so, Father, I thank you. You did that for your son, Jesus, the great shepherd. And, and I love you for that. And Father, I just pray that, that people will see that and understand that they need to trust the shepherd first. So we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, same branch, I'm 